Hello, it's me, Gemma, and I'm here at the Crumbs and Doily shop in Soho, and everyone's saying it's gonna snow today or tomorrow, and it is really cold outside and gray and boring and miserable. So I think I need to make a rainbow happen. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make these. They are <laughs> mini rainbow circus meringues with a little marshmallow surprise inside. Let's go. So the first thing you need to do when you're making any kind of meringue is to make sure that your bowl and all your equipment is completely grease free. Otherwise, your egg whites aren't gonna whip up enough and they're gonna be really floppy meringues and not gonna be great. So the best way of doing this is to use a bit of vinegar or even a lemon, a bit of lemon juice. So I'm just gonna put a bit of uh, vinegar on some paper towel, like so and just rub it around the inside of my bowl and also all over my whisk attachment. Now, as you can see, my bowl is sitting on a set of measuring scales because I want to weigh my eggs because for this meringue recipe, I need to have double the amount of sugar as I have egg white. So um, I'm gonna crack my eggs into this bowl and I'm keeping the yolks because I wanna make lemon curd later. Now don't forget, if you get any yolk in your egg white, then you just need to scrap it and start again. Go and make an almost completely egg white omelette because if there's any yolk in there, that's also gonna stop your egg whites from whipping up and getting all nice and stiff. So, there you go. <laughs> so I have got um, 152 grams now of egg white in here. So I have to double that and that's the amount of sugar I need to measure. So that. 304 grams. And lastly, I just want to put a pinch of sea salt in. Make sure you use really fine sea salt, otherwise it won't dissolve quick enough. Right, we're gonna start mixing the eggs. So get that lovely grease-free whisk attachment and pop it in. You can do this by hand, but you're gonna need, you know, guns of steel, because it's gonna take a long time. Let this thing do the work for you. Or at the very least, a hand mixer. But um, this is my trusty mixer, and it's very, very helpful. So start on a low speed, and what you want to do is build up the protein um, strands um, in the egg, and if you whip it too fast too quickly, it kind of breaks down a bit. So what you wanna do is, is give it a, a solid, foundation, so you start mixing it really slowly and then when sort of big bubbles start to form and it gets a bit foamy, then you speed it up. So as you can see, the bubbles have got much smaller and tighter and it, it's gone really white and it's pretty much almost there and if I turn it off, and lift it up, put it over my head, it doesn't fall out. <laughs> Did actually get a bit scared then. So I've put it back on a, quite a high speed and now I'm gonna add the sugar and I don't wanna dump it all in at the same time because that will knock loads of air out, which is not what we want. So I've got a spoon and I've got this on medium to high and I'm just gonna spoon this sugar in one by one until it's all gone, keeping it mixing all the time. Right, all my sugar's in, so I'm gonna leave it like this, mixing away happily for about five minutes, and then I'm gonna come back and check it to see if all the grains have gone. My meringue's been mixing for five minutes now, so I'm just gonna check it. So I'll turn it off, and what I'm looking for is a really glossy, smooth mixture. And the easiest way of doing that is to pop some on your finger, super peaky, uh, really glossy, and then just rub it between your fingers. And if you can feel any grains of sugar left, then it needs to be mixed for a little bit longer, so it does. So I'm gonna do that now. Okay, it's had an extra couple of minutes. Uh, so now I'm just gonna check it once again. It's perfect, so it's ready to have vanilla put in it. So I'm gonna add a teaspoon of vanilla and just mix it for another couple of minutes. Now that my meringue mixture is ready, I'm just gonna pop it to one side because I need to prepare my piping bag because this is not gonna be a rainbow on its own. 
you need to help it. So I've got a big old piping bag here and I have a round nozzle, a large round nozzle whacked at the end there. And to start with, I need to turn this inside out. So just turn the, the top bit of it over. Make sure it's really even and straight. You don't want it to buckle up. So there we go. And I'm just gonna pop that to one side and now it's the exciting bit. So I have a plate here with some color paste and I have red, orange, yellow, green, blue and pink. And that is gonna form my rainbow. But the, how do we get the rainbow on the meringue? Well, it's really easy. You just need a really long paintbrush. <laughs> so I'm gonna, one by one, starting with red, draw lines of food coloring up inside the bag. So here we go. So I'm just painting along the table basically, starting from about an inch away from the nozzle in a straight line all the way up. And for this reason, I don't want any of my colors to mix. So I'm keeping the kind of shape of the piping bag open and so that none of the sides stick together and mess it all up. Right, all my colours are in there and so as you can see I've got very faint lines of colour going all the way up the bag and none of the sides are touching so this is going to make magic happen when I square out my meringue. For the next bit you've got to be quite careful. I've got a rubber spatula here and I'm just going to gently pop my meringue into my piping bag but try not to let it collapse. So spoonful by spoonful just layer it all in really gently. So I've got all my mixture in here and now I just need to turn it back the right or side up. So gently drag all these bits up and give it a little jump every now and then so that all the meringue comes to the bottom. And then form a little twist at the top so that you can squeeze out from the top to the bottom without losing any out the other end. So as you can see, it's starting to look pretty exciting in there. Um, and the first bit that you're going to pipe out isn't going to have much going on in it at all. So I'm going to use that to stick my paper down to my baking tray, because otherwise it flaps about. Right, now is the exciting bit. I'm going to put some little marshmallows and hide them inside these meringues. So I've got mini marshmallows here and I'm going to put them on my baking tray, space them out about three or four inches apart and we're going to pipe our meringues straight onto them. So now it's time to pipe. And there's still, I can see, a little bit of blank meringue going on so I'm just going to get rid of that into my bowl until I start seeing the colour come out. And there's a bit of a knack to getting the perfect meringue kiss and that's to hold your piping bag about an inch above your, your marshmallow, start squeezing, but keep it in the same place and then lift it up. used all my meringue up and now is the final thing that is sprinkles so I've got some hundreds and thousands here which are really gonna make these guys super circusy I'm just gonna sprinkle them on all my meringues are covered in sprinkles now so it's time to bake them and I've got my oven preheated at 100 degrees Celsius which is quite low but I'm gonna bake them really gently for about 30 to 35 minutes. You'll know when they're ready when you can pull them away from the paper really easily and if they don't pull away then stick them in for another minute or two. <laughs> 35 minutes is up so I'm going to get them out of the oven and check them. Ooh, yeah, coming away nice and easy so they're done diddly on. So there it is. Look how cute this is. 
really reminds me of the circus, which is why I'm calling it a circus rainbow meringue. And it's beautifully rainbowed. It's got a cute little marshmallow surprise inside and they are delicious, which I'm just about to prove. Mmm. Because they've cooked really, really slowly on a low heat. They're so mallowy and soft inside. And the vanilla and the salt really bring out all the flavour. Mm. This is so tasty. But I better not eat them all. I should probably put them in the shop, so put them on a tray. Well, if you like that video and you want to see more recipes every week, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link up there. And I'll be back next week with another great recipe for you. I'll see you then. Bye.